How did they make those computer animated characters look so real? Whether it's a knight clad in metal armor or a hulking green shirtless hero, it all comes down to the magic of lighting and shading. Welcome to Newbie's Corner. So last month we talked about polygons, the most basic form of geometry in computer animation and video games. Before that we talked about what rendering is. We're going to build off of these two topics and talk about shading and lighting. If you haven't seen those two episodes yet, click the links over here. Uh, don't worry, we'll wait for you. Okay, a few caveats before we get started. First of all, we're a Maya house here at Spectral Inc. And while what we're going to be discussing should be generic enough to apply to any 3D package, we will be basing our discussions on our experience working in Maya. Secondly, while you can't really talk about shading without talking about lighting, we won't be going into too much detail about lighting itself. We'll cover that in another installment. Some applications call them shaders, others materials. Some are designed to use the computer or game console's hardware to render in real time, while others work with software renderers. Different types of shaders can make a surface look like gold, or glass, or furry, or like a cartoon. Whatever the method or the name, whatever the purpose, shaders all do the same job. They describe how the surface reacts to light. When you have a piece of geometry and a light source, the computer projects a ray from that light to the surface and compares the angle of the light ray to that of the normal of the surface. That angle is known as the dot product. The computer uses the dot product to determine how much light, if at all, the surface gets. A shader is basically a formula that you assign to your geometry. Just like there's different types of recipes, there's different types of shaders. The abilities of the shader differ from one to another. Some shaders are very generic, while others are extremely specific. And they differ from one renderer to another, so there's no one answer as to how to utilize a shader, but there are some general abilities common to most shaders. The most obvious is color. Sometimes called diffuse, this is how we set the color of the object. We can set it as a solid color or we can utilize a 2D texture like we discussed in the last episode. Some shaders utilize reflectivity. Things like mirrors are completely reflective, while some things like the surface of a highly polished table would only be partly reflective and only at certain angles. The amount of control depends on the shader. Similar to reflectivity is specularity. This is the hot spot of an object, or the reflection of the light source itself. Think of a polished apple, and you see that little bright spot on the apple when the light is hitting it. That is specularity. What specularity really is, it's an imperfect reflection. What it's reflecting is the light source, just like a mirror does, but because of the imperfections of the surface, little microscopic imperfections, the light doesn't bounce back at you directly like it would in a mirror. Instead, the light gets scattered in all different directions. So while you see that brightness of the light being bounced back, it doesn't have the focus that the mirror has. That is very cheap to reproduce in shaders in the specularity channel. Most shaders control transparency, allowing light to pass through it like with glass. Some shaders allow you to take this further with things like translucency or refraction. Translucency is something that isn't transparent but still lets light pass. Think of a glass of milk with a light hitting it. Refraction is the way light bends. If you've ever seen a pole standing in clear water, you might have seen the pole appearing to be bent in the water because the water is bending the light. Prescription glasses work pretty much the same way. Most basic shaders allow the use of bumps or normal maps. These are used to create the illusion of surface detail or texture. A good example of this would be the skin of an orange. It would be expensive to model every little nook and cranny in the geometry, but bump maps create the effect by manipulating the light hitting it to create shadows as if the geometry was actually there. Some advanced shaders have what's called subsurface scattering. This simulates light's ability to penetrate and then scatter within an object. Ever put your finger to a light and see it glow red from the inside? 
That is an example of subsurface scattering. So that's it for Newbie's Corner this month. To see any of our other videos, click the links over here. If there are any topics you would like us to cover, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and we'll have you feeling like an industry insider in no time.